what has come across is that a number of companies are either for social reasons, but more commonly for resource constraint reasons, for risk avoidance reasons, um, or for cost reduction reasons, starting to pay more attention to consumption of, of water and the energy that's associated with it. And that just sort of opens the panel is, is for your, your, your perceptions on whether you think that is uh, that's a trend that has taken hold deep, deeply enough in, in corporations to continue, not as a matter of being green, but as a matter of just simply being prudent. So it's taking hold, it's not yet taken hold, um, in a nutshell. I mean, companies that use a lot of water have always been somewhat concerned about their water consumption, but the experience of um, various beverage companies being shut down in certain areas of the world, um, uh, I would have thought was fairly, uh, it was kind of a wake-up moment for that. Um, you know, uh, companies that have um, long <coughs> had operations of polluted water, um, all of a sudden that becomes less and less acceptable. Um, so regulatory risk, brand-based risk or whatever, um, it is beginning to take hold. I think one of the things that's driving it is the recognition that if you use a lot of water, you almost certainly use a great deal of energy. Um, and if you are trying to um, reduce energy, uh, water consumption is a great thing to look at um, in ever so many cases. Um, that's certainly been IBM's experience. We make um, semiconductors. Uh, we use millions of gallons of RO filtered water a day. Um, enormous energy content to that. We have systematically grown a mentality now that says that wherever we encounter water in one of our plants, it has temperature and it has pressure. How can we harvest that? Firstly, how can we reduce the volume that we use? Secondly, how can we harvest the energy that's, um, that's already in it? So all kinds of um, chilling, uh, cooling kind of applications, all kinds of um, different uses of the pressure. And guess what? Our water consumption's gone down, our energy consumption's gone down very significantly as well, despite the fact that uh, the throughput through the plants in question has gone up. So, you know, it's, it, it, it begins to sink in. I think I agree. It's, 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 it's a lagging indicator. I mean, you don't talk about the water footprint of a product in the same way that you do the carbon footprint, right? So, so but except through the connection to energy. Uh, on the consumer side, I mean, there's a few interesting things we're seeing. Uh, Clorox is having huge success with Brito right now, and that's really a, a sustainability play that people are switching away from bottled water to home filtration. Not so much to preserve water, but more around kind of sustainability aspects associated with the plastic bottles and things like that. But, I mean, you're starting to see it all become. I'm very fortunate. I don't have to worry about awareness of water scarcity among my, my, my customer group. They're, they're very aware and have been so for quite some time. I, I, I can agree that, that in the U.S. in domestic markets, uh, awareness is certainly increasing. Uh, 